Hello dear friends, I wonder how many of you are actually aware that by changing the placement of the ICL from horizontal to a vertical position, you can actually change the amount of vault that you get after implanting the ICL. Now what you see is a non-toric Visian EVO ICL being implanted. And as I inject the ICL inside the anterior chamber, I'm making sure that the perforation is lying to the right. This ICL has been sized at 13.2 millimeters by various methods of examination. The ICL slowly unfurls in the anterior chamber. I perform the procedure under topical anesthesia. Once it unfurls in the anterior chamber, I then take care to tuck each of the four portions of the haptic behind the iris. The size was calculated by horizontal white-to-white -white measurement taken by the digital calipers, Pentacam as well as the IOL master. In spite of taking all these precautions and sizing the lens as accurately as I could, the most important parameter being the vault of the lens was a little excessive. It was slightly more than twice the corneal thickness in this particular patient, as you can clearly see. So what we did was we checked the anterior chamber, which is slightly shallow. The IOP was normal. The gonioscopy showed scleral visibility in all four quadrants and therefore the patient being happy with the post-op outcome and unaided visual acuity of 6x6 and N6 was just followed up for over several weeks and after one week the patient's IOP was still under control and the gonioscopy was open. Now the question is should we reduce the ICL size to 12.6 millimeters in the other eye because horizontal white to white measurements were almost similar in both eyes. Now 13.2 to 12.6 millimeters which is one step below in the different types of ICL length is a difference of 600 microns but if the ICL turns out to be too small will it cause a very narrow vault and will it cause a cataract because if the ICL inadvertently touches the lens it can cause cataractogenesis. Should we implant the same 13.2 millimeter ICL in the other eye even though we know the vault is high? Now if you perform a UBM you can resolve the issue because it will tell us the true width of the ciliary sulcus. However here is a simple solution to the problem if you don't have access to a UBM and that is to implant the ICL vertically instead of horizontally provided it's not a toric ICL. The vertical distance of the ciliary sulcus is wider than the horizontal by 200 microns and therefore this helps to adjust the vault a little bit. Now let us see the second eye surgery in this patient. For this I am implanting the ICL in a vertical direction as you can see. I make sure the ICL unfurls extremely slowly and the perforated portion of the haptic lies to the right. Then each portions of the haptic are then tucked behind the iris into the ciliary sulcus region. This ICL does not need a peripheral iridotomy because of the perforation that it already has and therefore the EV on ICL is a very good option for those who don't like to do PI. In the post-op period, I found that the vault was excellent. It was almost perfect, about three-fourths the corneal thickness. The IOP was normal and gonioscopy was open to the scleral spur in all four quadrants. The patient had excellent visual acuity in this eye also. Just by changing the direction of implantation, you can actually help to modify the vault of the ICL. Thank you for your attention.